I just did the most gross burp. I hit four kilometers and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> Basically use this like vibrating thing on my head. It's like, it takes two minutes, but just doing it just. I'm gonna breathe in your burp. <laughs> I just did the most gross burp, and Amelia has opened the window because she's scared she's gonna breathe it oh, in. Oh, you know, <laughs> this is so gross. But you know, when you like breathe out and it just comes out, that's what happened. But we are up nice and early. It's actually only eight o'clock in the morning, and we are going to 66 books if you know you know 66 books is basically like a giant book warehouse and um you get books for like ridiculously cheap they have i think it's open to trade every day of the week apart from weekends and then like on their website they have a whole bit of information on this but they have like certain days where you can go as the public and buy books but you have to sign up and be a member so when you get there you basically get a yearly membership for, like two pounds so we're gonna do that probably come out with a hell of a lot of books so i'll give you a little haul afterwards of what i get this one's got a list as long as her arm <laughs> but we're looking for like fantasy smut basically and like a bit of everything else well you actually have a list don't you yeah with like different books i want to get the throne of glass series as like hard copies because i did i done well i'm doing akatar as like kindle so i want like a physical but we'll see what we get i'll show you when we're there apparently it's like pure chaos so can't wait we're gonna be there early as well. We're getting there at 8.26. We stopped and have a Donald's breakfast, but we're gonna be there early. So if the queue's really big, we'll go jump in it. If not, then we'll just wait in the car. But I'm buzzing, can't wait. So we're here over half an hour, like 40 minutes early, and the car park's already full, so we're being put in a different car park. So I think he's telling you to go. <laughs> he's like, hello. I know. So I think it's gonna be quite busy. How you go. to carry like we both keep being like oh <laughs> but we've gone full fantasy vibes as yeah. much as possible but we haven't found any smut i've got my box of goodies amelia's got her box there's so i actually have so many in here i can't even explain it i'm not even going to try and open it i just got back from 66 books so i'm going to show you what i got there's quite a few in here but i'm going to start with the ones that i bought not at 66 books so we were kind of looking for a few things but we also weren't really looking for anything in particular so we had a rough idea of like certain series and stuff that we knew we wanted to get um or you know books that we'd seen round and about and stuff but when we went in we basically just thought like let's let's just have an open mind let's read some blurbs let's see what's there etc so we're going to go through the ones that weren't from 66 first because there's two so we got this one in waterstones <laughs> And then we got this one in Costco. So we've been around the houses and it's only one o'clock and I've just got home, but we did 66, then we went to Costco, then we went to Waterstones because we wanted to find these two um, specifically. So I got both of those. Can't wait to read them. Apparently they are absolutely amazing. I'm gonna put them all on the bookshelf in a minute and make a TikTok that's like, like POV, like when you've, like when you've just been to 66 books and you put the books on the bookshelf hoping your boyfriend won't notice or something like that, like just something funny. But they were, one was, 10 pounds one was 16 pounds and then this box of books was 198 pounds but i got them for 56 pounds so you get quite a good discount when you buy from there like they're all basically at trade price which is really good i know there's quite a lot in here but i basically have been selling so much stuff on vintage and so much stuff on like facebook marketplace and everything and i've been selling old books and i've just basically been trying to like make some money back books are my weakness they are the one thing i will spend money on and i just yeah i just got a few these are all going to be sold on when i'm done with them so i'll just sell them on or like put them in charity shops and stuff but anyway i don't need to justify spending money but i know someone will say because of the no spend and stuff and i just wanted to explain that like i actually don't really spend any money Okay, if I got them for £60 and they were 197 like, I basically saved, like, £120-£30, right? So, this is what I got. We got Heartless by Elsie Silver. I've heard these are amazing, these books. I don't know if I'll love it, but I've heard really good things. So, I thought I'll get that one and give it a try. 
The Distance Between Us by Maggie O'Farrell. I'm pretty sure I've read a Maggie O'Farrell book before, but the blurb of this sounded really good and I was kind of sucked in by the cover as well. So I thought I'd give that one a try. Some of these are authors I've never heard of. Some of them I have heard of and some of them, when we were walking around, there was girls of like a similar age and they had similar books in their baskets. So we were kind of like listening in and if they were going nuts over a book, we were like, okay, well maybe we'll like what they're picking up. So we were kind of doing that and other people were doing the same. It was quite cute because everyone was kind of like chatting in the aisles and stuff. Next, I got the Christine, Christina Lauren, The Unhoneymooners. This is very like, just go with it vibes on the blurb. So I thought that would be a good one. I got The Lost Girls from Kate Hamer. This one sounded a bit like someone who's been kidnapped into a cult and then it's like they come back to reality and the people are like trying to find out what happened to them and that kind of thing so it sounded like a good one for like a bit of a mystery but also a bit culty and like it just sounded really good i have <laughs> a wide variety of genres that i like i like a thriller i like a mystery i like a romance and i love a fantasy like i'm it just depends what mood i'm in when i start then i got this one by george rr R. martin and lisa tuttle which is Windhaven. this is a bit of a fantasy one sounds quite Sounds quite good, a little bit romancy, but also a girl's perspective, which I love. I love when books are written from a girl's perspective. I'm not a big lover of fantasy written from a male perspective, just because I don't think it's as like, they don't describe it as well. Anyway, Hold My Girl by Charlene Carr. This one is about um, two women who basically have their IVF babies swapped. So like they end up conceiving each other's, well not conceiving, they end up being implanted with each other's children and it's like a custody battle over the child. Then this one is Bad Girl Reputation by Elle Kennedy. Someone ran over and grabbed this and was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's here. And I thought, well, if you're doing that, then it must be like a TikTok one that everyone's going mad over. So I thought, sounds a bit easy. Sounds like a good one. It says praise for good girl complex. So I'm thinking that might've been the first one in the series maybe. We'll have a look. I don't know. Some of them, I will say, when we went there, everything's like completely all over the place. Like you, it's not like fantasies with fantasy, like romances with romance or anything like that. They kind of have like kids books together, adult fiction, non-fiction-ish, but they did have like random ones from series. So we were kind of saying like, you, some of them would be like a second in a series, but if it sounded really good, we'd get it because it was cheaper and then just buy the first one when we get around to reading that book. Or like we'd keep hold of it just in case we found like the other version somewhere or whatever. This one, the whole series was there minus the last book, but I only bought the first one because I thought, let me see if I like it. If I don't like it, then obviously I can go back and get, like if I do like it, sorry, I can go back and get the others. But it's Victoria Aviard's Red Queen. This is a fantasy um, series. It's apparently really good. As we can see, I'm not actually gonna need to buy books for another like seven years, but books are my weakness. <laughs> then I got Immortality, which is by Dana Schwartz. This one, Amelia was gonna pick up as well, but she didn't, because she wants to see if I like it first, and then we thought we can just, with some of the ones that we both wanted to read, we thought we can just kind of like swap them between us. But this one sounds like it's just a really good story that's a bit gothic, bit, bit lovey-dovey. <laughs> the pile's growing. James is gonna kill me. Then I got this one, Amelia also got this one as well. This is Silver in the Bone, which is by Alexandra Bracken. This one was a series. I'm not sure if this is the first one of a series. I need to have a little look, but I think there's quite a few. If I remember rightly, I think Amelia said there's like quite a few in each. She's done a few, but again, fantasy, which we love. Hardbacks, there was a lot of, but there was also some of the hardbacks. There was also paperbacks in different parts, but I don't mind buying a hardback sometimes. I quite like them. This one is The Snow Song by Sally Gardner. This one sounds a little bit like, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's kind of like a woman imprisoned by superstition chained by Gil. And it was like kind of like a bit of a love story vibe. Then I've got Sundial by Catriona Ward, which is, I can't really remember this one. I think it was like, so it's like you can't escape the desert, but you can't escape the sundial either. So it's basically like, Callie's afraid of her mother. Mother Rob has begun to look at her strangely, telling her secrets, la 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 la. So I thought it could be quite good. And apparently she's a best-selling author from another book of hers. So I thought if I like this one, I can go get the other one. I've got Claire McIntosh, A Game of Lies. This one sounded so good. It sounded like a bit of a thriller. So it's kind of like a fake, well, not fake, it's fake as in it's in the book, but it's a reality series and basically one of the contestants is murdered or goes missing or something and then it's like the how, who, how, who did it, what happened kind of thing. I picked that one up and said to Amelia, I think she'd love it even though it's not fantasy, so we both went for that. I got Traitor of Red Winter by Ed McDonald. Um, this one just sounded really good and I thought the cover was insane, so I picked up that one. And then the last one I got was The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten which also sounded really good. A lot of these were series, which is quite good. Like that one was number one of the series, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, I got quite a few. I'm gonna be busy for a while. I do already have some on my Kindle and on my bookshelf, but I think anyone who is a reader, 
you know that there's always a million to be read and I'm not, I'm on my, I'm on a book ban. We're not buying any more books apart from the last two Akatars, which I still need to finish. We're not buying any more books for a long time now. Like when we're just not. So I'm going to get through Akatar and then I'm going to start on this lot. And then I've got a couple of books here, there and everywhere. But I do, I love my Kindle and I love a physical book. And I know I don't need to justify, but I feel like with the whole debacle that came back from me doing the no buy month, I know someone's going to complain that I've just bought some books, but I've had a really good month with work and I sold things and I've been saving like you would not believe. So I thought, you know what? I'm allowed to treat myself sometimes. <laughs> I'm allowed to get a few books that I really want to read. So I'm going to pop these on the bookshelf and film a little TikTok and then I'm going to sit and read and I need to get some food as well. I'm really hungry. So I'm going to eat some lunch. But that was my book haul, all stocked up. So I've rejigged the shelves a little bit. I've moved this one up. These bookends are from Maison de Mond. I got them ages ago, it's a sun and a moon and they are the most gorgeous thing. They are so beautiful and I never ever want to part with them. The top shelf is always our self-help shelf. So, self-help shelf, shelf, God, I can't speak, but you, you know the gist. That's like all the ones we don't reach for as often or we read a little bit and then put them back. Then we've got some novels here. I put all the hardbacks there because I thought they just looked a little bit nicer and they don't fit on the shelf below and it looked a bit messy. I, d I just didn't really know what to do with it. So I've popped those there, but I am thinking I maybe should have put this up one. But the only problem is these I can't stand on that shelf because they're too tall. So that's just what I went with. So I've mixed them in with that shelf. And then obviously I bought those ones as well today and I've just popped the little thing in the middle. But I do think I maybe need to swap these two shelves around, potentially. We'll see. I'm going to see how it goes when I keep looking at it. Eventually, I want to have dozens of these absolutely full to the brim with books. I'm about to go do my first ever run, like, as a race kind of thing. Um, I'm only doing 5k, but I'm so excited. And I did a 5k because I thought, let me just get out of my system, doing a run on my own, in that kind of environment where you've got, like, a little running number and all that kind of stuff. And I'm really nervous. I don't like talking to new people. <laughs> by Tuesday morning it's literally like 10 to 12 but I thought I would do a little update because I realized that I just haven't picked the camera up for like two days I would say there's a rhyme and a reason to it but honestly I just I haven't had anything to talk about I just felt really like out of it for the last two days and I've been filming loads of videos yesterday and getting loads of TikToks done and stuff and every time I wanted to pick up the vlog camera I was like I literally have nothing to say and I think sometimes when you've got nothing to say it's better to say nothing than to just try and waffle because it just doesn't work. But let's go back a little bit. So the last clip you will have seen was me, the 5K, and then you're gonna have seen a couple of clips of me running it. I went in with the full intention of like vlogging the whole way around. I was planning to just be on my phone and be like filming myself running and stuff. Didn't do any of that, did I? Got too nervous, it was raining, I was stressing, I was really worrying. And then I was so focused on how I was running and my breath and all these different things that I just completely forgot, like completely forgot to pick up the camera and do it. So it was just a bit of a like panic situation for me, but I am so proud of myself for getting out there. I know it was only 5K, but for me, just the fact of doing a race was the bit that I really wanted to get over the fear of. Like, I know I can run 5K, I know I'll be all right. I was just really worried about like, what if I start running and then suddenly I can't I can't breathe because I'm really nervous and then I panic? What if my hip starts playing up? What if my toe starts really hurting? Which, by the way, it still does. So I broke my toes, what, like, mid-January? And I still, like, if I bend... If I, like... If my toes are flat like this, if I go like that, my second toes still hurt. This one more than the other one. So if they're cold, they get a bit irritated, which is really annoying. I think that's just something we're going to have to live with forever now. But I was really worried about all these different things. And then I ran it. I honestly thought I'd come, like... <laughs> quite far to the back like I really didn't think I'd got many people behind me I thought I was one of the last finishers and as I was coming towards the end I got like four kilometers in so I was my like my family group chat James is in as well and I was texting the family group chat to be like okay hit one kilometer hit two kilometers hit three kilometers because I had like the markers around the track 
and we basically ran around this lake it was really beautiful and i was texting them being like hit four kilometers i hit four kilometers and i was like i can't do this i literally can't i was like i've never like no i'm out i'm done i don't know what i'm doing like this is too much and i just i was like i have to keep going and it's the first time i think i've ever run 5k without stopping was that race like i think normally i stop for at least like a little bit to walk so like what i'll do is as i'm going along if i feel like i'm really out of breath or my heart rate's getting too high i'll be like oh okay well i'll just run to i'll just walk to the lamppost up there or i'll just like walk until i get to that bench or whatever it is i'll just like pick a marker that isn't too far ahead and give myself a couple of seconds just to like breathe um but i ran continuously slowed down a little bit when i hit 4k because i thought if i really slow down i can sprint the last bit got to the 200 meter marker and i just floored it like as soon as i saw the finish and i heard it i was like i'm i'm done i'm going i'm like that's me i'm i'm off so i sprinted to the finish and i finished in 29 minutes and i think it was like 45 seconds or something like that which is actually really good for me that's the first time i think in a long time i've done sub 30 like the first time in a very long time i've done it in under 30 minutes um normally it's like 35 ish but I'm so proud of myself because I think the last time I did that was when I was running 5k like nearly every single day in lockdown. So really proud of it. And I actually was the fastest person under 40 to finish, which I think is nuts. Like that is so nuts to me. Um, and there was quite a few young people in the race as well. So I thought that was really cool. So yeah, really proud of myself for that one. I'm going to book on to a local 10k coming up soon as well. I did have a 10k booked for Easter Sunday. However, it's booked for 10 a.m. and my dad has booked us all to go for lunch. Like me and my family on Easter Sunday at 12. So there's no way in heck that I'm going to be able to finish. Uh, so the, where I'm doing it is like 40 minutes away from us. Then I'd have to somehow either get back here or go straight. But then by the time, like, I just, there's no, there's literally no way I can do it. So I'm going to have to cancel that one, which is really annoying. So I really want to do it. But there is another one I can book onto that's like actually pretty close, which is... A 10k as well and it's a couple of maybe about three weeks after so i'm gonna book onto that i've got half marathon booked for the first of september i'm doing the big half so let me know if you guys are doing it too because i know some of you are into running or you know if you want to support come head down to london <laughs> i'm gonna get quite a few of my friends and family there because i think it'll be really nice to just like do it i think without getting emotional it's i think if i'd have just run a half marathon when i was supposed to i think i would have just been like do you know what i've done it like really proud of myself but all of these flipping obstacles, like my hip pain, which I still haven't had physio on, I'm still on the wait list. The toe, like breaking my toes situation, like all of these little things have been such big obstacles. And I just like, uh, I think the sense of achievement when I've done it is going to be so massive because it just means so much to me. Um, and I know it sounds really silly because like everyone's running at the moment and everyone's doing really well, but like I'm not a natural born runner and I've never, ever, ever in my life been into fitness. Like I've always hated it until the last like two years where i've just like really pushed into it and i think something just clicked in my brain a couple of years ago when i got my first coach and i just i knew that i wanted to start taking it seriously and looking after my body and i'm so glad i did and i'm so glad that i stuck with them for a year and then obviously i moved over to georgia and then georgia and i did about a year as well but i'm so glad that i stuck through it and i'm so glad that i had coaches i now don't have a coach i just do it on my own i just like make up workouts as i go and stuff because quite honestly i just i'm not training for anything specific and i thought <laughs> i feel bad that like george is doing all these plans and stuff when i'm not really training for anything so i said to her as soon as it comes like a little bit closer to the half then we'll pick it back up but yeah i just i don't know i just I'm, I'm so proud of myself for sticking with it. I'm so flipping glad I stuck with it. And I'm so glad I've gotten into running. My mum actually ran a marathon at 60, which I think is amazing. My brother runs ultramarathons all the time, but he's in the army. So I feel like that's just... <laughs> we don't even talk about that one. I went for a run with my brother before. And I hadn't run in a really long time. And he came to stay, so we went for a run together. And his... <laughs> his Garmin watch I was struggling like I was bright red like sweating I was so out of breath and I was like <gasps> like panting alongside him and he was literally just like strolling along chatting away and his watch was like are you still warming up my panting and dying was his like oh I'm still doing a warm-up like my watch doesn't even think I'm working out I was like <laughs> what <laughs> for right now I'm sat on the sofa and I'm just having a little decaf coffee because I just wanted a little hot drink. I'm under the heat blanket because it's really cold in here. Um, and I'm just exporting the weekly vlog for this Sunday. Um, just so it's ready to go. Because James and I are off to Dublin this weekend. Which I'm so 
excited about. We both have Irish blood and I cannot wait to go to Ireland. His dad was Irish. James's dad's Irish and my mum's dad was Irish. So my Irish is a little bit a little bit more sparse, but I still think it would be nice to see a country that's supposedly like like stupidly beautiful. So I can't wait to go. Um sadly we're only there for like one full day. So we've got an early flight um on day one. So I think we get there at like 10 a.m. or something. So we'll have the whole day on the Sunday and then well we'll have from like 10 a.m on the sunday till we go to sleep obviously the whole of monday and then we're back super super late on tuesday so i think our flight's at like seven or something so we've still got the whole day but we don't have enough time to like go to giants causeway or anything which i really wanted to do but i just think the only way we could do it is if we use our full day but then that means we're bookending dublin and i don't know if that's enough time to do dublin in like two half days but I've got a long list of places to go that have been recommended. I've been told to avoid the Guinness factory. So I think we're going to do like completely avoid that and just find like an actual local Irish pub um, and go get a Guinness there. We are going to go to the library, which I cannot wait for. That's going to be like the most beautiful thing ever. Can we tell I'm PMSing? I'm just getting emotional about everything. <laughs> I need to get on with editing and get some bits done because I've got, I set a little time thing on my phone because I was like, I really need to like, be productive however my laptop is running so slow that i was going to edit a podcast for tomorrow which has now been postponed because i had to flip and wipe my laptop because it was going so slow and i lost it so that's now not going up but i'm going to do all my other little bits and pieces and yeah it's been 11 minutes of me talking this is going to be a long vlog hope you're in for a <laughs> you're in for the long haul We've got a slightly different angle. I've propped you on my washing because I thought I would show you a little parcel that just came in from Worst Behaviour the other day. Now, if you've seen these videos before, Worst Behaviour is the black hoodie that I wear all the time to the gym, the white hoodie that's got Fearless written on the back. I also have, um, I have some sweatpants. I have a hoodie that says Worst Behaviour on the front that's beige. I've got so many bits. I've got like sweat shorts and stuff. I wear their stuff quite often. Normally it's like the sweatshirts and stuff, but also my leather jacket that I wear 24 seven is Worst Behaviour. I honestly love this brand so flipping much and I am so excited that they've gifted me. Like I honestly am so grateful. So let me show you what's in here and then I really need to make some lunch because I'm starving. It's quarter past 12 and I'm really, really, really hungry and I also want to get a run in at about two o'clock. So I need to eat soon so that my food can go down. Um, but this is what's in the box. So everything I get, I get in a small because it does come up really big. So first up we have this white sweatshirt. The sweatshirts are fab because they're really nice and thick and heavyweight and the quality stays when you wash them. I just honestly rave about them so much. I did sell a white one with blue writing on it before that I bought a couple of years ago and I really wish I hadn't because I just, I know I would love it now, but at the time I didn't really love color. So I sold it and I wish I'd kept it, but I've got this one. So this one just has like some little text on the back. So we've just got Worst Behaviour Studio Garments with the red. Really stunning. I love that it matches the front. And like I said, I get everything in the small. So they come up, they come up really nicely oversized. So they don't fit like tight around your middle or anything. Like they just go kind of straight, which I love. Um, then we've got this hoodie, which is in a really lovely kind of blue gray color. Um, but this one's just like nice and big and chunky and oversized. And then it's got worst behavior on the back. I think this potentially is this. No, it's not. It's the same like wavy text, but the one on my black one is a bit more. I think it actually spells out. It's not just WB, but that again is in small. Then we've got this t-shirt, which I'm going to chuck on to go for a run this afternoon because it's really beautiful weather and I want to get out for a run because the sun is literally streaming in here right now. Not that it looks like it, but it is streaming in. But this is the t-shirt. So it's just like a, a gray one. And it's got worst behavior with the sunrise on the back. And it says burn flames and drown oceans, which is very cute. Then we've got this long sleeve top, which I think I'm going to pack for Dublin. Um, but this is like a little raw hem cropped number with the long sleeves. And the long sleeves are just like a bit flared on the end, which I thought was really beautiful. I do have some flares as well. And I think that would be really cute with flares um, or equally like jeans or something. Then I've got this, which is a striped oversized short sleeve. Kind of reminded me shape wise of, you know, my denim jacket, like shirt jacket thing that I wear quite a lot in the spring summer it reminded me of that and I just thought it was really nice and I love that it's the big bold stripes because I don't love stripes on me sometimes I wear them I just I don't know I'm I know loads of people really really love stripes like one of my best friends Tash loves stripes she looks so good in them I just don't think they suit me in the same way maybe I need to go for like softer stripes I don't know but we're gonna try I really like it and I think the shape and stuff as well will be the determining for me like that shape I think will suit me a lot better the last thing they did have the most gorgeous cream knit 
but it wasn't available in a small anymore but i did get the gray one which looks like this so this just has worst behavior on the front it's got the raw hem that you can kind of see and then the back is just plain i think i might wear this on the flight to dublin on the weekend because i think this with my blue jeans my docks my gray coat and my black dumpling bag will be a really cute outfit plus i can sling this over my shoulders with my active wear if i'm a bit hot you know like i just think it'll be a good one for outfit options this will also look really cute with my satin cream skirt that i'm packing and my docks so my idea for outfits when i'm there we're only there for three days you're going to see the packing video the packing video i did say in it might change slightly depending on if stuff turns up this turned up and this is what i wanted to pop in so i've got my converse packed so i'm thinking one day i can do like black leggings black long sleeved gym top coat bag and then my converse with a cap on and then for the other day i've got satin skirt the um, jumper and my docks and then to get there I've got my jeans and my docks and my jumper so it'll basically be like same same but different but I think that's kind of nice because then it's like I'm wearing all of the pieces and I'm not packing too much but yeah I need to make some lunch because I'm starving and then I'm gonna get some work done for a couple of hours and then we're gonna go out for a little run which I'm very excited about I love going for runs at the moment I just find it so therapeutic I do need to um, get some podcast bits edited at some point today so i'm undecided because i've got a lot of energy that's very booby let's cover all that back up <laughs> um i'm undecided whether to have like an admin day or whether to do like filming stuff because i'm in a bit of a slump with filming i just feel a bit i don't know i think social media is just changing a lot and i feel like what used to work now doesn't work and i just i feel like i'm not i'm not this young little spring chicken that can do all these cute little outfits that do really well on tiktok so i'm trying to kind of like zone in and find my thing like find a thing that people want to see and it's kind of difficult but we're getting there we're, we're pushing through and we're doing it so yeah that's my bits from worst behavior i need to make some lunch i'll catch up with you at some point good morning gang i am in london today i've got a couple of bits happening around the city i'm going to townhouse for a nail appointment so i'll take you with me for that and i'm going to an event with viva scout which is like hair skin and nail supplements that i've taken so many times um, and I'm having a scalp analysis, like a hair and a scalp analysis, which I'm really excited for because I'd love to know like all about my hair and stuff to so just know how to look after it the best because it's getting a lot thicker and a lot better condition but I just want to make sure it's like 10 out of 10. So very excited. I grabbed my coffee, had a phone call with my friend G this morning, which is lovely. And I'm just, yeah, hopping along. But I'm just, oh, it's such a beautiful day. It's like 15 degrees. It's very springy. It's sunny. It's blue skies. Like it's just beautiful. And I just thought, why not walk 20 minutes instead of getting on the tube? All the cars down on the table, knowing there's no way that you'll be able to win this one. But she's somebody else in the making. First, she's just gotta stop all the faking, and she'll be there. Into my first little meeting. So I got a hair treatment, which is like a vitamin microneedling treatment on your scalp. It's apparently meant to help promote hair growth. So we've done that one. <sighs> Very up for it. And now I'm doing a nice hour-long walk through Hyde Park to get to my next appointment for my nails. But I thought I'd just take a little stroll through the park because it's such a nice day. I'm just gonna walk everywhere. Make her feel better. Make her feel better. Then that's where she'll go. Guys, I need to fold clothes and put them away and I feel like the only way I do it is if I film doing it. So, enjoy. This is me filming to make myself put things away. I feel like it's because then I'm distracted. That's the reason I do it. I've just got back from London. I basically did. So, I thought I was going in for just like a scalp and hair appointment um, to like analyse my scalp and my hair. And it turned out that it was actually a... How do I explain it? So, it's like a... It was like a vitamin treatment, but it was like a needling thing. So they basically, I think it's Hanaga Beardy. I think that was how you say it. But basically she is like a really well-known hair doctor. Um, so she basically does all these treatments for women who are experiencing hair loss, whether it's like alopecia or they just want to grow their hair, look after their hair, etc. So I went in and I initially thought I was just getting an analysis of my head. And then obviously we started doing the treatment and she gave me a vitamin treatment. 
basically used this like vibrating thing on my head and was like needling like in around my like t-section this like vitamin cocktail and she said it's basically for helping your hair to grow helping to improve the condition from like in the follicles um so it just yeah i don't really I don't, I don't really know how to explain it because i don't really know exactly what it was but i'm gonna find her website and i'll share the link in the descriptions to the website if you're interested my mum is super interested in it now i've told her because she said that she's experiencing a bit of hair loss so she was really keen to find out a little bit more but it was really cool i really enjoyed it and i love learning about different things like this because i think in our generation and like previously it was so taboo to talk about things like hair loss and not that i'm experiencing hair loss myself but i think it was so taboo to talk about and like there just wasn't really any solutions whereas now there's all these different solutions that people can do that aren't just like hair transplants um so i think it's really good and i think it will benefit a lot of people to know that these things are out there but it's only like half two and i'm back home quicker than i expected so i'm giving myself the afternoon off and i'm just going to i'm actually going to move you because that's a really rubbish angle but i'm giving myself the afternoon off because i literally have nothing to do for the rest of today because i haven't planned to have today free so i'm just going to allow myself some time to just read my book on the sofa and chill um get myself a cup of tea like get all cozy it's just going to be a really lush afternoon to be honest i can't actually wait but i do need to tidy up a little bit first and i'm going to pop a couple more bits on vintage as well because there's a little pile in the corner of like random things that i've just grabbed out the cupboard um over time like random t-shirts and stuff that i just don't want to keep i haven't gone through my summer boxes yet so i'm sure there's probably going to be more but i just thought i would do that before before i forget um i think there's like a couple of pairs of like satin pjs and stuff that are going to be going up but my vintage is the same username as my instagram etc so it's just jess m shepherd if you're interested i do believe i don't know if this is like fact but i'm pretty certain the vintage shops you can only shop from the country that you're in so i think if you're in say for example spain then you can only shop spanish vintage sellers likewise everywhere else in the world so if you are in another country um because i always get messages saying people can't find it because they're in germany or something but that's why because you can't shop another one um because you shop can't blah, 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 because you can't shop someone's vintage if they don't live in the same country as you which kind of makes sense because like the postage situation and also like i don't personally post to other countries just because it is such a pain in the ass and whenever i've tried it always ends up just not working out i really can't be asked about this way there's just stuff everywhere like i've got piles of washing i've got washing that's dry on the drying rack thing and i just can't be bothered to put it away so i've just left it on there because putting clothes away is my least favorite activity don't get me wrong i love washing things and i love like putting it all into the piles and putting it in the machine and getting it clean and like hanging it up and everything i hate putting it away again absolutely burning passion hate putting it all away again it's like it takes two minutes but just doing it just i did also get a few bits from uniqlo while i was in london as well so i'm going to show you those in two seconds when i've put all of this away because i really wanted <laughs> the camera's actually only been going five minutes i really wanted to have a little look around and see if i could get the viral bag um it's like a black shoulder bag but it's a bit bigger because i've got i've got three black bags but they're not the right size from uniqlo so it's only a small bag but i picked up the bag like i said that i've seen all over tiktok and stuff it's adjustable but it's like a, a cute little shoulder bag like so but it can also be worn crossbody like you can adjust the straps that you can wear it longer and cross body so like i thought it was quite cute and my one test of whether i keep it or not is if my kindle fits because this comes everywhere with me and it does so perfect because i just i really wanted something that was like the right size to fit the kindle in and it's only 30 pounds and they had a cream one as well but i just thought it was gorgeous i don't know if it has pockets or anything i just think it's really really cute yeah it does it has a couple of pockets inside but quite a big good sized bag so I got that. Then I got two of the vests with the built-in bra because I have vests that are this kind of style, but I don't wear them because they're kind of like, they're not see-through, but I just, I hate that you have to wear a bra underneath and then it's got to be strapless. It's just annoying. So I'm going to sell those, I think. And then just obviously keep these two. They're about 19 pounds each, but they've basically got like built-in, let me try and show you. If I turn it inside out on the white one, I think it would be the easiest to show you. So both of them have like a built-in sports bra. 
with like pads in it that's like literally stitched in so i just thought it might be quite handy i haven't tried them on yet so i'm gonna try it on and see what i think but i just i wear vests a lot in the summer and i thought if i can have a vest with a built-in bra it just saves me so much aggro and i've heard such good things about these so we're gonna give them a try and see what i think they also had they also had the skims dupe t-shirts that are in the like gym range so I got one of these again, £19.90, but it looks kind of thick, like it looks really thick. So I thought I could just wear this as like an out and about t-shirt, not necessarily a gym top because it's quite gorgeous fabric. The fabric says it's like air, air, airism, dry, cool to touch, smooth to touch, but honestly really good skims dupes. Then I got these, which I thought were really cute, although now looking at them, I think they might be a bit big. Um, but I thought if I fold them over, and that, that um, label is really getting in the way right now. But I just thought if I like fold them over, they're quite a cute little short for summer with like a little white t-shirt and a blazer or something. Just, I don't know, I thought they were really cute, so we'll give them a try. They weren't too expensive either. I do just think they might be, we'll see, we'll see. They might be swapped. <laughs> and then the last thing I got was this, which if you've been a long-term subscriber, you will know I am really a Disney girl at heart. I absolutely love Disney and I found this and I thought it was just, I don't know how to show you in the best way. I just thought it was the cutest thing ever. So it's got... It's got Mickey Mouse and the gang on it, but it's like one of the baby tees, you know, like the tight fit little baby tees. And I kind of liked that it's like this pale, well, it's like a dark pink, like pale red kind of colour. And because it's a baby tee, I just thought it was really, really cute. So I picked that one up. There was only one extra small left and it was on one of the like hangy bits. So I just swapped it around. But I've got extra small in everything apart from the shorts because I didn't know how the shorts would fit. Let me try them on over my trousers, actually. I just, I wasn't sure how they were going to fit and I just didn't want to like risk it. Oh, they are big. No, they're too, I think they're too big. They are drawstring though. Does the drawstring actually, Oh, the drawstring actually does tighten them. So maybe they'll be fine, because if they're a bit bigger, I can just like tie them in. But yeah, I just thought they were quite cute for summer. So we'll see. I don't know, I don't know. It's hard to judge when I'm wearing like flares underneath, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, yeah, I just thought they were really cute. They had like striped ones and, like um creamy check but i just thought the black and white check was the most me and like with my my thought was wearing these with a vest or with my black be the energy top like the t-shirt or something of that kind of combination could be quite cute 